Hey guys, I'm Double Wide Six, and today what I'm going to be doing is installing a variable speed pool pump. I have a pump in here, and it gets to be kind of loud, so that's one reason I wanted to go with the variable speed pump. Another reason is I can save a lot of money by having it. And the last reason is variable speed pumps filter the water better. And uh, I'll talk about all three of these different things in more detail a little later in the video. So here's a look at the uh, plumbing for the old pump. It's basically 2 inch PVC. And I'm going to be putting in a circuit pool smart flow pump, which you can see here. And I'm going with the circuit pool pump because that's what I use for my salt water generator. And it's been flawless and working great. And I really like it. And I figured I'd just stick with the same brand and keep everything the same. Because I know you can have some flow problems when you're running a salt cell. And uh, by pairing up the exact same brands, I shouldn't have any problem in regards to that. 62 to 64 is how, much, how many decibels the old pump is. And this is a one horsepower pump. I think all I have to do at this point is just kind of pop the lid. We'll get the water out of the old pump and uh, I'll remove the old pipes. Now what I'm doing is I'm loosening up the fitting from the old pump and just removing the PVC pipe. My old pump wasn't even attached to the floor so it was pretty easy to get out of there. And now what I'm doing is taking the electrical wires out of the old pump. It's pretty easy. There's a bonding wire, a ground wire, line one, and line two. And after I got the wiring done, I was able to pick up the pump and get it out of there. What I'm doing here is I'm setting up for the new pump. I'm tying in and priming the pipes with a, the purple stuff is a primer and that cleans the PVC. So I'm just making sure I have a good coating of that first before I open up the glue. So I'm just getting the first pipe all put together. They give you some pretty nice uh, fittings to join the pump up to the PVC. And you don't need any Teflon tape. And there's a pretty good size gasket. So, uh, you know, it is removable with, you know, not much work. The end of the pump has this fitting. And there's a nice uh, heavy-duty O-ring on here for this union. So it says to just hand tighten this. So that's what I'm going to do. And then there's a gasket that fits in here that should be good This is the inlet side of the pump, and the manufacturer calls for, I'm using 2 inch PVC, so I need 12 and a half inches of a straight run. That's supposed to make things easier for the pump. So that's why this pumps back a little 
further than the pump I had installed before. I had to cut the pipe here because I, I couldn't screw out the fitting with the elbow on the pipe. So I'm just using a sawzall here to make quick work of getting rid of the old piping. If you're watching this video, you may be kind of on the fence as to whether or not a variable speed pump is the right choice for you. I did a fair amount of research before I came down to the conclusion that I wanted to get the circuit pool pump. And the main thing for me was I was trying to save money on my utility bills. And uh, these pumps are supposed to use 90 to 95 percent less electricity than a traditional pump. Now you'll see a little later in the video that I show that this pump allows you to actually see the watts that are being used. And this pump is using less than 100 watts at the slowest speed. So when it's running, it's kind of like using the same amount of power as, you know, a 100 watt light bulb, which really isn't much power for a motor. And traditional motors, they can use a couple thousand watts. And so can this pump if I speed it up to full speed. But the nice thing is, I don't need to run it at full speed. One of the things that I read when I was researching for installing this variable speed pump was that if you have one of these pumps installed for a year or two, the money you'll save on your utility bill is enough that it'll cover the cost of the pump. You figure every two to three years you get your investment back from this pump. This pump's going to be paying for itself over and over again throughout the life cycle of the pump. It's also Energy Star rated and from what I understand when I do my taxes at the end of the year I can claim it and I should be able to get like a government rebate or something you know for upgrading my equipment. And my equipment isn't getting any newer. I think it's something like 12 years old. So, you know, there were a lot of reasons for me to get an upgraded pump here. And if you're living in a place where your utility bills are really high, or you have older pool equipment that might need, like, longer run times to chlorinate your pool properly your annual savings could potentially be thousands of dollars. You might be thinking that you don't want your pool water flowing so slowly, but there's actually benefits to it. And I was surprised to learn that, you know, having the low flow of the water going through the sand filter allows the sand filter to be like super efficient and really get all the fine debris and particles and separate it from the water where under normal conditions with a regular speed pump everything's being forced through that filter and it's harder on your equipment so now all that fine debris is being filtered out and you're having longer run times which keeps the water flowing in your pool which makes it harder for algae to actually get a foothold on your pool our pool house is used kind of as a changing room when kids are over using the pool. And it was always loud in there. That's why I have in the background, you can see a little bit of that pink insulation on the walls. And that was to absorb noise because my old pump was so loud. And this pump uses one of those, I think it's called TEFC. It's a totally enclosed fan cooled motor and it's using like permanent magnets and it runs as I said super efficient and super quiet so I really like that and paired with the features of this pump where if I need to run it at high speed let's say I'm pumping water out of the pool or I need to hook up a vacuum or anything like that I can do it and I'm able to simply lower the speed there's programmability and just like my saltwater chlorinator, I, I like the fact that it's 
really easy to program. I don't need to like read the manual every time I want to program it. So everything's there just the way I need it. And, you know, that's kind of why I decided on this circuit pool pump. This is the last part of the install. It's probably the toughest part because I'm doing two ends at once here. The vertical pipe I could pull out of the pump and connect that, but I wanted to make sure everything was lining up exact and by doing them both at the same time um, it would pretty much guarantee everything would work out and the pipes would be level. I just wanted to quick show you the wiring. There's an electrical whip coming down. You have line one and line two which are red and black and there's also a ground lug which is green so all those are tied in they have a waterproof cover with gasket right here that I need to attach on there and the only other thing is there's a bonding wire so the pool bonding wire gets tied onto the pump just like the old one did last step for me is to secure this so I pre-drilled the concrete would have been easier to do this first but I wasn't sure exactly where the pump was going to go in regards to all the pipes and stuff. So I drilled these on a slight angle. Okay guys, I got the install done. I just want to take you through and show you it. So as I said, this leading pipe going into the pump needs to be about a foot long. And that's supposed to help the pump. So we followed the directions there. And uh, I set the clock. I have the power on. The chlorine generator is off right now because there's no water in the system. And everything looks good. I'm hoping that we won't have any leaks. Um, I think it looks nice and neat. And I don't feel like doing it again. So hopefully uh, we have no leaks here. And what I'm going to do is pour water in the pump to prime it, and we'll turn this on, and we'll check for leaks. Alright guys, so I'm going to pop the lid, just making sure there's nothing in that bucket, no parts or anything. And my pool guy, he always told me to prime the pump by putting water in it, so that's what I'm doing here. quiet. This is the lowest speed setting. So it's showing about 43 or 44 decibels. You can see when I'm talking it's actually uh, very sensitive. And right now it's on the lowest setting and we don't even see any pressure registering on the gauge but I know it's on because uh, I can hear the fan on the pump and it's just a little over 40 decibels and if I look here on my chlorinator I can see through the window this is a clear cell it shows the salt water actually turning into chlorine so and you can see the water actually flowing there's a little bit of an air leak and I think that's coming from my uh, sand filter somewhere at it's actually coming from the neck of it I gotta tighten that up a little bit but no other leaks everything's really good and I don't know much about this unit but I can look down here and uh, this shows me how many watts the units actually using so right now at the lowest setting the speed 4 it is 67 watts so you know that's less than a hundred watt light bulb per hour and that's incredible and we can just run this thing if I wanted to 24 hours a day you can program it however you want 
um, it's simple to change speeds here's speed 2 you can hear the motor gets a little louder and I don't know if you can see it but if you look at that cell it's uh, the water's flowing faster you can see it but even that is super quiet and uh, what you can do is you can look at the speed here so that's 1500 rpm and uh, time is the time of day duration is how you program it for you know 24 hours in a day so you can set it up to run however you want now I gotta read the manual and figure out all this stuff but uh, you know I'll probably run this thing like 15 hours a day or something at the lowest setting and it should be 80 to 90 percent cheaper than uh, my other pump and should pay for itself really quick year after year here so anyhow hopefully you enjoyed this video and you learned a thing or two about these variable speed pumps I did a lot of research on this and uh, I'm gonna make a follow-up video um, you know once once I get more familiar with this unit and I'll tell you how it's working and uh, you know as far as the cost savings and things like that in a future video and also how well it's working with uh, the saltwater cell so stay tuned for a future video and if you like pool videos and this one helped you out please give it a thumbs up alrighty guys so I hope you enjoyed this video another awesome thing that you just learned how to fix or make whatever um, yeah, so bye, and please make sure that you subscribe, and also be sure that you say, what was your favorite video that you ever seen Double Ed 6 do? Bye, guys!